Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Hacking Cell Storage. On Mondays, what we do is we look back at the week in numbers, and there were some unbelievable things happened to us last week, and I'll get right into this in a moment. Wednesday's episode is a special one because I'm going to talk about how we increased everybody's prices by 20%, what we did and how we did it, and what we're doing if we get pushbacks, how we're incorporating it all, and... I believe so many people, it's underutilized so much is this price increases and it's supply and, and demand. And I talk about this so much to different self-storage owners. And when you're over a certain amount full, you should be increasing your whole prices. Supply and demand, if it's, if STEM customers won't pay it that are in, some other customers will. Um, I don't want to say it's a doggy dog world or anything like that, but it is literally supply and demand. We know that people will are willing and are going to pay more for units. And so we need to make sure that we actually um, increase the prices to maximize the revenue because that's what it's all about. We're all here to make money out of this beautiful game. We all want to make money. And so you've got to maximize your revenue. You've got to keep filling up that bathtub of hot water. And that's an analogy I used last week, and uh, I'll probably use it again on Wednesday. So that's what we're talking about on Wednesday. Okay, so how was the week in numbers last week? Last week... Guess how many quotes we did? Go on, have a guess. We did 89 quotes. 89 quotes in one day. Hey, sorry, one day, one week. It was mental. So what we're going to have to do from now on, we are probably going to have to, um, our paper clicks, our Google is working so well that we're probably going to have to scale it back a little bit, just purely because we're actually 91.55% full. And when you're that full, then obviously we're missing, last week we missed out on so many customers. My wife worked on, on Friday. And she missed. She 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 actually said that she missed out on three customers because we couldn't accommodate. Oh, that kills me! That absolutely kills me. We couldn't do it. We didn't have big rooms. We've got rooms of uh, reserved as well, and so we just couldn't. We couldn't get anybody in. I mean, we've we've got more people moving up next week, and so it's it's a real balance act. We've so we've already reserved the people who are moving out, so they're supposed to move out. We had 160 square foot that was supposed to move in this week. However, the person that the unit that was going to, they were supposed to move out, but never actually moved out, and so we lost another one. And so we're actually turning people away and losing customers, which it kills me. However, it's only going to be for a short amount of time because we will soon be opening our second site um, on Clough Road, which is going to be fantastic. 11th out of 12th. Do you know what? I can't even remember how much square foot it is, but it's going to be absolutely beautiful over two floors and it's purpose built for manless, a manless facility, a manless facility. Uh, so really, really excited about that. And obviously I'm going to document the whole journey. Um, so yeah, we, we're we trying to ring around to get containers. We, 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 we just need more units. We need more units and uh, we can fill them. But the problem is, it's the lead time on these units. We bought some outdoor external units, drive up units, the American version as well. So they should be coming. We're just waiting for Janice to give us a, the roll of shutters. As soon as they're done, we'll have another, ah, I don't know how many units it is, maybe, maybe 18 units. And so we can't wait for them. So we just need to, I don't know, we Janice along to make sure we can get these bloody roller shutters. We've got the units all ready. They can be delivered in a day, any day we want, but we just need the roller shutters to go on the units and that's all we're waiting for. So yeah, it's an incredible at the minute. So we're probably going to start turning down our marketing just purely because we don't need, we can't accommodate people. So if we can't accommodate people, um, and so many people are in the same boat as well. I, I saw on uh, on LinkedIn that some some... Some people have been saying that it's it's the busiest they've ever known. They've worked in the industry for eight, nine years, and it's the biggest, busiest they've ever, ever known it. And it's exactly the same for us. It's absolutely mental, which is fantastic. So if you're in self storage right now, enjoy it, embrace it, because times like this don't happen very often in your working career. So enjoy it. But most of all, bloody maximize it. Bloody maximize it. You have to maximize your revenue. If you don't, then you're leaving chips on the table and we don't want to leave chips or money on the table. Um, yeah, so the reason why I'm doing Wednesday's episode is because I've had so many questions about how we do price increases, what we do, what the terminology of a letter, what we do when we get a pushback, how have we increased 20%, how can you justify it to people? And there's there's a it, it, we did spend a lot of time thinking of how we're going to execute this. And don't get me wrong, we probably made, we're probably going to make some mistakes. However, Making some mistakes is, is definitely better than not doing it. So yes, we're going to make some mistakes. Um, maybe, I don't know. But so far, so good. 
Um, all the price increases will be going through this next month in July. And we, we've only had three pushbacks out of 140 or something like that, which is bloody good going, fantastic going. So yeah, over the moon. So we're going to go through that and I'm um, going to talk to you about the pushbacks, what they've said and how we are going to acknowledge that pushback and what we're going to do. So it's a really good episode is Wednesday. I'm really looking forward to doing it. A deep dive. Um, I, I also get a number of people saying, why on earth? Do, even my dad, my dad said to me, why on earth do you share so much? Why on earth do you tell everybody your figures? And it can bite you in the butt. Of course it can. The reason I do it is because the biggest danger to self-storage is self-storage itself. And if we all know the criteria we should be looking for and we act in a certain way, then there's no way that, that people are going to come in, rock into, I don't know, say Beverly, because now Beverly's got three self-storage facilities, only 30,000 square foot. Somebody isn't going to rock into Beverly anymore. And if they do, then it's bad for all of us because there isn't, there isn't a demand there. And so if we can, if, if the industry can educate people on what, what the demand is and where we should open, how much um, a Nova demand formula, the criteria, then it's better for me, it's better for you. So if I can just play my part just a little bit in educating people, then if we're all decent operators, then, hey, guess what? There's enough of that pie for every single one of us. Okay, so the amount of quotes was 89. That's 12.71 a day. So averaging 13 quotes a day if we're, if we're rounding up. Number of reservations. Actually, I haven't even checked the number of reservations. Number of reservations is 19. You will see that the reservations is at 21.35%. However, that would be that would be more if we could actually fulfill the customer's needs. So we'd have got more than that, but we just can't fulfill them. Um, number of forward movings was two, so that's 10.53%. Number of new movings was 15. It was a little bit disappointing, if I'm honest, for movings this week. Um, we expected a lot more. I think there was 400 square foot that didn't actually turn up or something. Um, so number of movings were 15. That is a uh, conversion rate of conversions to quotes of 17%. Obviously, it's going to be lower because this week we've had 89 quotes and the move-ins are people who have confirmed the move-in from previous weeks. It's most people when they move in, book it in advance. So they wouldn't just book it um, this week for now. Most people don't. Some people do, but most people don't. Hence the reason why uh, when you get high quotes one week, it will affect the conversion rates. And just like you, when you get a low quotes one week, then your conversion rate should be quite high because you've you've filled that. Um, you've got a backlog of customers. Your your um, oh, what's it called? Anyway, you know what I mean. You've got you've got the reservations backing up, and this this week they all come in. Right. So what else can I tell you? Number of new movings was twelve hundred square foot. So we moved in twelve hundred square foot. We was due more. However, there were six other movings, and so the total amount of movings was fourteen fifty. Um, so we had fourteen hundred and fifty. Uh, square foot moved in in total. I was expecting it to be around about 1,800, to be honest, because we did get some reservations this week who moved in this week. And so I did expect a little bit more. However, how can you complain when you're moving in 1,450 square foot in one week? And also when you're 91.55% full, you can't really complain. We had a bad day on Sunday, though. We have lost 225 square foot today. We was at 92.37 yesterday. And I was like, ooh! Oh, wow. And I love it. I love it. Anything up to 90%. Well, I said 85%, then now it's 90%. Now I want to get to 95%. However, obviously, with the interchange and the people moving out and people moving in, it's hard to ever, ever get higher than, you know, I don't know, 93% somewhere on there. It's going to be tough. Uh, so, yeah, over the moon with it. Very, very happy. Um, so, number of move, rooms moved in was 21. Number of rooms moved out was 13. So, we have total internal rooms occupied of 398. So that, my friends, is fan daddy dodo nearly at the 400 mark. Quote breakdown. So we've got Google, 64 quotes from Google. That is 72% of our quotes come from Google. Word of mouth is nine, so that's 10%. Passing by is eight, so that's 9%. Beverly 24 is two, so that's 2.25%. Use before, and by the way, I've got some very, 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 very important news about Beverly coming up. I can't tell you too much about it now. I don't know why I'm pointing the pen at you if you're watching on camera. I'm actually pointing the pen at you. Uh, I can't tell you too much about it yet. The reason being is it's not finalized. And obviously, um, if something's not finalized, I can't go into too much detail because, well, obviously I can't. I, I, could I have a egg on my face, couldn't I? Uh, but it is exciting. Really, really, really exciting. Like, 
unbelievably exciting. And obviously I'll share everything with you guys like you always do anyway. So when, when, when I, once I know that it might take, I don't know, it might take a lot. There's some developments anyway for Beverly. And once I know that we we can't get stung if we release it and tell people about it when it's signed, sealed, and delivered, then I will be telling everybody. But it is really, really exciting news. Uh, so used before was one. That is 1%. Social media was three. So that's 3%. Uh, estate agents, Bing, blog, leaflet is zero. And removals is two. So 2.25% for removals. I'm going to have a quick word from our sponsors and then we are going to uh, crack on with the rest of the information. Okay, we're back. So amount of containers in, zero. Amount of containers out, zero. So 26 containers rented out. We have got car parking. We've got 14 car parking spaces, no ins, no outs. And as you already know, the occupancy of the store is 91.55%. Hoo -hoo. I'm just... Make static. Honestly, guys, I can't describe to you how amazingly, fantastically nice feeling. <laughs> nice feeling it is. It just feels amazing because do you know why? It's been it's been really hard for you guys who are in self-storage, because we've got a lot of people listening who aren't in self-storage just yet. But for you guys who have done self-storage and gone through the lease up, when you've literally been shelling out money week after week after week because your expenses are very, very high when you first open. And your revenue is very, very low. And so for me to get to this point, honestly, it's just four and a half years of, of well, maybe three years of Rory because we was I was hemorrhaging cash, literally. I had a bill, like I said, for 60 grand. I can't remember exactly how much it is. I probably say different amounts all the time, but I had a big bill on my, on my table one day and I was like, well, how the hell can I pay a garage from Active Supply and Design? I have no money in the bloody bank. Luckily, I've got other podcasts. Uh, well, I did have another podcast called The Betting Guy and we released some software and that made me a tidy six figures. So that was really, really good and came at a nice time. Um, had to get really, really resourceful. So it, it's not plain sailing in self storage. It will never, ever get you rich quick, but it will always, always get you wealthy long term. And we have taken some massive risks that I wouldn't recommend anybody. The house has been on the line. Um, and so to get to this figure now, 91.55% and taking 70, 71,000 pounds, excluding that every single month, that's what we're heading for this month, is is unbelievable. And hopefully in two or three months, we'll be at the 83,000 pound mark. So it's, I, can't, I, can't, I could actually get quite emotional about it, just purely because I, I literally bet everything. I actually bet everything on self-storage. And luckily for me, it has worked. Um, so yeah. I'm I'm very very happy with it and uh, and it's just it's just a nice feeling to to know that the store is 91.55 percent full. I mean that that is that super duper, and we're fully uh, phased out. We can't actually extend it at all anymore. Right, weekly average sales per move in is 42.07, so 42 quid. That's what we've been taking uh, um, on on average moving. That is really good. That is, I think we had one customer who spent 200 quid. So, it, and overall, I think we took 631 pound. Actually, I know exactly because I've got a note here. 631 pound and one pence this week on packaging material, which is really good. One customer bought 200 square, uh, 200 package uh, box boxes and stuff. Um, and the reason being is because we had it out. The customer saw it because we didn't put it away. We had some like cupboards, uh, box cupboards and stuff, and we didn't know where to put it. We didn't have room. We did normally where we store all our boxes. It was. It, it was taken by somebody else. So we didn't have the room. And so we had to, we were just trying to I don't know, find a place. And somebody said, oh, I'll take them all off your hands. I'm like, oh, all right, brilliant, nice one. And so it's a timely reminder, again, to make sure that we have your display. You make sure you display the packaging material right. And when you do, bosh, 631 quid later. Let's have a look at what else can I tell you guys? Um, hmm, hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Um, Total amount of insurance sold this week is £70,000. That is an average of £3,888 per moving. And the reason why it's low is because we've had a number of students come in, uh, 25 square foot, and they've all been taking the minimum insurance, and the minimum insurance is £3,000 on a 25 square foot. So if you aren't doing that, little tip, make sure you have minimum amounts per different size. So £3,000 for a 25 square foot, it might be... 
£4,000 for a 75, £5,000 for anything over 100, I don't know, something like that, and uh, et cetera. So we go up like that. So make sure you're, again, it's all about maximizing your bloody revenue, man. Don't leave money on the table. There's so many, so many sites. I, 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 I've Honestly, I just look at so many self-storage websites. I've just, just before I did this now today, I've been looking at, I can't say what area, well, it's the northeast of England. I've been looking at the northeast of England. Um, two reasons. One, because a friend of mine is looking to buy a self-storage facility there around there. So I was doing, doing a little bit of homework around that area. And then it's there's another location that I was looking at around that area. And so what I do is I literally go through every single story site. I go through their website. I literally, I, I enjoy it. I'm a bit of a geek. I enjoy it. I, I'm, I'm almost addicted to looking at self-storage websites. And so many people are just leaving money on the table. And I wish I could just pick up the phone and say, hey, mate, give us 10 minutes and I'll increase your revenue by 10 grand a year. Oh, it's, and I'm not saying that I'm a genius or anything like that because it, clearly, clearly I'm not. But self-storage operations are not difficult at all. And so if we do the little things right, it makes a massive difference. And so the problem is, the problem is with this industry, I, I think we've had it too good for too long. And so you didn't need to be good. You didn't need to be anything other than just open. If you was open, you was making money. And good is the enemy of great. So if you're good, you are not great. You are not pushed to be great. Good, you're not motivated to move on to greatness. And so I always tell everybody that if you're good, that's probably a bad thing because you were, you're just happy enough. You've just got enough not to push to great. And that's the problem here. And it's, it's almost like um, when you, I don't know, parenting, for example, you look after your kids too much and you you they become softer because all of a sudden, it's like our kids, our kids in, in Moscow, they're, they're all very well brought up. And all of a sudden we played a team, but the parents were shouting on the sideline, push them, push them, kick them. I'm like, bloody hell, what? And all of a sudden they, they had no idea because they've been lived, they live in this pampered little bubble uh, to our kids, which is nice and fantastic for the kids. But then when they get to the real world, guess what? They get a rude awakening. So there's, there's gotta be a fine line of balance. And so all the dads often talk about it because it was different when we was growing up because we didn't, we want, it's like most of a nice area and stuff, but it's exactly the same as self stories. We don't have to get down in day. We don't have to be real competitive. We don't have to pull out our air game, but people are going to have a rude awakening in 10 years time. I can't wait. I can't wait because I think that's when I will be probably at my best because I, I want to maximize the, the revenue. I want to make sure that we actually uh, do everything we can. And this, so many people don't, haven't had that com competition. And so they don't need to, um, they don't need to do anything spectacular. It just works. And then when the competition comes, it's like, oh my God, you should be doing, you should have been doing it earlier. So if I can just, any, any advice for people, I don't, I don't I'm, I'm very conscious that I can sound like a bit of a, a, a guy is just going on and on and on about this, but I feel like it's so important that right now we've had it so good. We've had it fantastically easy in self storage in this industry and people will be listening to easy. We had it easy. We, we have relatively speaking, uh, if you just, I'm in a mastermind um, in America for self storage and I listen to their, what they're going through and, and what they've got to do to compete for business. I'm like, Oh my God, this is, this is all coming. I promise you, you'll never have it so good in self storage as now every year it will get that little bit more competitive, a little bit more competitive, a little bit more competitive. And every year you will have to make sure that you up your game. Right now, probably 90% of operators, you only have to be in the top 90% of operators to make a success of this industry. Every year, you'll have to be a little bit higher. You have to be in the top 80%. Then you'll have to be in the top 70%. In 10, 15 years, 20 years, guess what? To make it work, to make it pay, to make some real money out of it, you probably have to be in the top 20% or top 10% of operators. And you'll probably have to make sure that you are maximizing your revenue like one of those top operators. If you aren't, then every single year that, that you are in business, it is becoming more competitive and you it just, you'll, we'll have to up our skills as an industry. And I, I find this time fascinating because it will get more competitive anyway. I'm on my high horse and, um, I, I, by the way, I'm the biggest believer in self storage. I think self storage is an amazing industry. I just think that right now, most people, most places in self storage, it works and we don't have to do anything special, anything spectacular. But as the years move on, then it'll get more and more competitive. Right, I'll move on. So uh, amount of move-ins due next week. We've got 15 move-ins due next week. 750 square foot due to move in, which is Dan Diddly Dodo. 
However, I always say, however, oh, and I shake my pen at you. When I've got a pen in my hand, I'm shaking my pen. Again, amount of square foot to move out next week is 1,020. Oh, man. So uh, looking at the figures, it's... If we're even next week, that'll be a it'll be a good week. Um, I'm uh, hoping for an even week. That'll be fantastic. Right. So, what else can I tell you? Uh, the revenue is not good this week. The revenue is not good. Um, so what I'll do, I'll, I'll do the June comparison in a minute, but I'll tell you the weekly revenue first of all. So, well, the revenue overall is is okay, but it's it's only. I feel like that Beverly's propped it up this week. So at uh, Stormo, we took £16,327.47, 46 pence. So £16,327.46. pence, And we had £306 of those direct debits. God damn you. Um, at Beverly, we took £5,173.06. pence, And the reason why we took two, so much is, like I mentioned last week, is we've got somebody paying a year up front for a container, which is nice, lovely, jubbly. So we took £21,552 500, 21, between the two sites. Now, let's have a look at the we, uh, monthly revenue so far. True period revenue versus actual revenue. Um, last week, last week, we was... Uh, June, I'm just making sure this is correct here. June, was it last week? When was this? Oh, that's six. Um, forget me. So here we go. So store more true period revenue is £74,774.49. pence. That's what we should have taken. However, we've only taken £71,289.49. Uh, £71,289.14. pence. That is a negative of £3,485.35. pence. However... Again, however, I'm just watching the um, Netherlands match because I'm recording this on Sunday and Netherlands and Czech Republic are drawing at the minute. Uh, there was a bit of an elbow there, so I wonder if it's going to be a red card. Um, it looks a sore one. Anyway, I bloody love football. Come on, England. Come on. Tuesday, can't wait. Oh, look at me smiling. I can't absolutely goddamn wait. Um, yeah, we've got £1,513.49 and pence to be taken to bank Uh and that's going to have to be paid in by Wednesday to make sure that it goes in to the figures for June. So we want to make sure we take that into bank. Um, so yeah, it'll be two grand down. We'll be nineteen hundred down, pound down. So hopefully, hopefully we can make it up um, this this week. I think we can. I think we'll end positive. I actually do because we've had Saturday Sunday and that that imp implicates things. Um, so yeah. Right, uh, at Beverly, we should have taken £13,100.39. We have actually taken £15,435.11. So we are a positive of £2,334.72. However, we've had a customer pay £2,384.20 for 52 weeks. So we're slightly down, but literally by 50 quid. 50 quid um, in pittance or £49 in pittance. Right, my friends, that is it. I believe, I do believe that, um, yeah, how long has this been? All right, 23 minutes. Jesus, these are only supposed to be 10 minutes when I first started doing it. I thought, oh, yeah, I'll do a 10 minute update for last week. And I realized that I talked there, living daylights out of myself. Honestly, guys, I can't, I'm so excited about the Beverly thing, uh, but I can't tell you too much about it, unfortunately. Uh, but when the time's right, I will tell you because it is game changing. And I mean, game changing for me. Um, oh, business, me, business. Uh, so yeah, really, really excited about that. But guys, girls, thank you so much. I really appreciate you. And I just hope that you guys are having an awesome time as well. And for the people who've been getting in contact and tell me how good um, and how busy you are, I'm over the moon for you because do you know what? There's, there's a hell of a lot of, of people, of businesses that aren't doing well in these times. So we just need to embrace it and make sure that we appreciate it because I know firsthand that my sisters are obviously in the wedding industry. Luckily, things have opened back up, so it's getting a little bit better, but they've had it really tough, really, really tough. And I know my friend as well, who's got two pubs, it's been an absolute nightmare for him. Absolute bloody nightmare, obviously. And yeah, so yeah, just appreciate the fact that we're in an awesome industry, really, really awesome industry. And you don't need to be that good to be successful in this industry. Remember, up your skill levels, up your skill levels. And the fact that you listen to podcasts, um, not just mine, but everybody's podcast, other people's podcasts and educating yourself and da, 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 it stands you in good stead, my friends, to, to take on board what we're saying and implement it. If I can help anybody, that's what we're here for because, um, yeah, I know storage has changed my life and hopefully it can change yours as well. And if you're thinking about getting into self-storage, I keep saying it, get into self-storage. So many so many people contact me and say about when's the best time? Should I got in earlier? Yes, you should have got in earlier, but you can't get in earlier. So the second best time is right now. So 
get in storage, find, do your homework, do things right. And it, you'll, you, you will never get rich quick, but you'll get rich long term. All right, my friends, love you. I appreciate you. And I will see you on Wednesday, on Wednesday, when we're talking about my 20% increase, 20 flipping percent. I got advice uh, from people and not one person said increase prices by 20%. So we've gone, obviously I always get advice from people, but yeah, we've gone overboard on that. And I want to give you an update and say how it's working and uh, what is the difference going to be for, for us financially as well. Um, yeah, so that'll be you know, lifting the veil of, uh, of what's happened. All right, my friends, thank you so much. See you later. Bye.